everybody. This is Petey from Bergsic Arcade at BergsicArcade.net. And here we are back again for, I guess, episode two of this little module on just setting up a quick multiplayer game using Unity's new Unit. Well, I guess they don't call it Unit anymore. I think they just call it Unity Networking, but I'm still going to refer to it as Unit. But let's just go ahead. We'll jump right in. And I wanted to decouple the way the player and the network player move around together. And it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. It's just one line of code. And it's actually pretty close to this. All I'm going to do is check to see is if we're the if we're not the local player and if we're not the local player i want to return and what this is doing is saying okay you know like every update so every frame we're checking to see if we're not the local player we're not going to process anything below here and all we're doing below here is getting the input and moving us around now of course we still got to be able to remove those network players around so let's go ahead and look at that next so I'm going to go ahead and save this off. I'm going to jump back into Unity. And let's grab our prefab, our QB. And we're going to add another component here. This time around, we're going to be adding a network transform. Now, I have to admit, I love how easy it is just to add something like this, and boom, it just works. But I do not like the network transform. I find that it's just not smooth enough for me. So let's go over some of these variables. So the network send rate is how often do you want to send this transform information uh, across the network? And I'm going to leave it at nine for now, but I've always found nine to be really laggy. I always end up cranking it up. And during just testing, I usually just crank it up and not worry about it. But when you put the game out in the wild, you really don't want to just you know rely on just cranking it up. So how are we going to go ahead for the next one, the transform sync boat? We have uh, rigid body 3D. Do we actually have a, we do have a rigid body, but the rigid body is not what we're using to move. We're actually just using the transform. So we can tell it what to sync, you know, none transform, rigid body 2D, sync character controller. I'm going to pick the transform. Now under movement, the movement threshold, basically how much does our player have to move before we go ahead and try to sync it? Uh, snap threshold is if the player or the network player moves a certain amount of well, distance. It'll, you're, you've probably seen games where it just snaps where the player seems to teleport. Uh, by default, it's set to five. So if the, you, know, that you could actually use it as a teleport. If you had something on one side of your screen, and when they ran into it, uh, you know, they appeared over here. Instead of writing all the code for that, it would just automatically snap you. And interpolate movement factor. I can never really get this to work very well. The higher the number, the smoother it is, the less precise it is. Again, like I said, I'm just not happy with the way the network transform works. It might get an update in... Well, one of the new updates, but right now I usually end up running my own, but I just want to use these for now. So we're going to come down and take care of the rotation. What axis do we have to rotate on? Uh, right now, my cube doesn't rotate at all, does it? Let me just quickly check here. Play. I'm going to host. Yeah, I, I don't rotate at all, so we can go ahead and cut down on some of the bandwidth usage and just say none. Now, later on, as we start rotating, like if you have a top down, uh, Y, you want to take uh, the Y. And of course, if you have a, a kind of a side view, you'd want the Z. And of course, for a full 3D game, you generally want to be able to send the X, Y, and Z. But like I said, right now, mine doesn't rotate. So I'm going to go ahead and pick none. And of course, we also have the interpolate for this as well. Uh, whether or not you want to compress the rotation and sync angular velocity. I'm not going to do any of that stuff there. So I'm just going to go ahead and save it off. And let's go ahead and take a look at it now. So we'll do a quick build. And like before, I'll go ahead and host here. And let's actually move the camera around a bit just so we can see a bit better here. We'll zoom out. And of course, I'm moving around. Let's come in. Uh, we'll make it a client. And he fell off. He was too close. We'll stop, do it again. And move him right away. We should actually move that. The, the point at which, which it spawns, which we actually will. We'll do that next. But as we notice now, it moves and they move independently, which is really awesome. We go ahead and just shrink this down a bit so we can actually see both. So they do move independently, but it's really laggy. So I'll do one more quick build here. Oh, we don't actually want full screen because we will be able to see both at the same time. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and crank up the 
network send rate. And let's also increase this to three. And of course, let's hit stop. Uh, everything's saved. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do one more quick build. And like before, we're gonna go ahead, host here. Uh, let's actually move it so I don't fall off. Uh, we'll hit the client, and of course we'll move that. And it still seems a little jerky. And I, I don't know why, like when I use Network Transform for bullets and stuff like that, it seems really smooth. It seems it's with the input, and I've tried different types of input, and I can't seem to get it to be as smooth as I would like. But anyway, oh, look at that. We're rotating. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at how to change positions, the starting positions. Which is really cool because what we're going to do is go ahead, create an empty. I'm just going to call this spawn point. And I'm actually going to give it a tag just so I can see it in game. I'll just do it a, give it a little yellow here. And by default, let's go zero, zero, zero. I want to raise it up to two off the ground. And let's just go ahead and we'll position it randomly. And I'm going to go ahead and make another one. So I'll just well, we won't duplicate it yet. What we're going to do is come down to Add Component. We'll come down to Network, and we're going to take the Network Start position. And that is it. Now, what happens is the Network Manager, if we come over... Well, before we do that, let's go ahead and we'll make the second one. So this is Spawn Point 1, and I want to keep them together. So they're kind of side by side. Now, let's take a look at the Network Manager, and what's actually going to happen is this Spawn Info... When, it, when the scene first starts up, it's going to go ahead and go, oh, look, we've got some, some spawn points in here. And it knows there's spawn points. What it's really looking for is the network start positions. But what it's going to do is go ahead and have the player spawn on them now instead of a spawning on wherever the prefab's origin is. And we can change this method a bit. First, we have random. So every time something spawns, it's just going to pick one or the other in this case. We don't really have any control over it. And we also have another option here that's built into the network manager for round robin. And what this does is uh, whatever one it picks, it's gonna pick the next one after that. And then it'll just keep, in this scenario, bouncing back and forth. Uh, let's say if you had more than just these two, let's say you had, I don't know, four, one for like a diamond. And let's say it started with the first one, then it would go to the second one for the next spawn. The next one would be at the third one, next one at the fourth one, and then it would just start over again. So let's go ahead and take a look at this behavior. We'll go ahead, save this off. And like before, we have our host over here. There we go, I started at that spawn point this time. Let's go ahead and start here. I started at that spawn point this time. Now we're gonna go ahead and just uh, hook a camera up and we'll just disable it, just so we can actually see things as we start moving around here. But like before, everything else just works. Now we can spawn where we want. Pretty good. So let's go ahead and we'll shut that down. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and start playing with the camera. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I can be a pretty chatty guy over there when I'm not walking through a forest are being stalked by eagles and falcons, lions, tigers, and bears.